One of the most daunting things about deciding to be a musician professionally is figuring out how you're actually going to make it work. Most musicians end up having to be freelancers because there really aren't many full-time positions for musicians. As a full-time freelancer, I wanted to give some of my tips and ideas of how to manage your career, whether you're starting out or getting more comfortable and established. Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of these topics are not really covered in music school and we're not really taught these skills, so most musicians have to sort of figure them out as they go. My advice is primarily going to come from a classical perspective, but I think most of these tips apply to all musicians. It's unfortunate that a lot of us go to music school and pay for an expensive degree and we're not actually given many career skills. I think one of the reasons there's such a high drop-off point from actual music majors versus people who are really working in the music field is because when we leave school and we get out into the real world, a lot of us don't really know how we're going to make our career work, so we decide choosing a plan B and we leave music behind. I think if music conservatories did a better job preparing our students, we'd have a lot more successful musicians out there and likely have a more thriving classical music scene. The first step when you decide that you want to be a freelance musician is to just brainstorm all the possible ways you can make money doing what you do. If you want to be a performer, the first thing you're going to consider is concerts. Do you want to play in an orchestra that has a formal audition process that happens on a regular basis, or with a smaller group that maybe is just a word of mouth recommendation? Either way, start to narrow down some groups that you might like to play with and see the steps that you have to do to get accepted into those groups. If you have your own ensemble or you have a solo project, you can look into putting on concerts yourself, meaning you would rent the venue yourself, hire someone to take money at the door, or perhaps look for concert series that might want to present your concert. You will likely make more money working for somebody else that has a budget to pay musicians a certain amount than you will to be putting on your own concert. However, putting on your own concert usually gets to meet your artistic goals, and we'll talk a little bit more about balancing your goals with the things that bring you income. After performing is the possibility of teaching. People have all different feelings about teaching, but you have to keep in mind that there are many different levels you can teach, and there's also a variety of what capacity you can teach in. The go-to for many classical musicians is private lessons, as many kids, and even some adults, enjoy taking lessons on classical instruments. I personally teach a lot of private lessons, I really enjoy doing it, and I feel comfortable teaching at all levels, so I teach elementary school, through high school, and through adult amateurs. I don't have a strong preference to the age or level that I like to teach because I like to have variety within my studio, but certain people are a little bit more picky about which ages they prefer. Some really struggle with teaching beginners and younger kids, some find the younger kids to be sort of more fast-paced and fun, and the adult students to be more challenging. Either way, I find teaching especially to be beneficial to us as musicians because we are constantly learning as teachers when we're teaching others. If you've never taught private lessons before, you might have some challenges getting private students from the beginning directly through you. So you can seek out community music schools and other music schools that hire teachers to give private lessons and do most of your teaching through an institution at first. If you've explored community music schools and you're still looking to get students going on your own, you can easily advertise online as many people do Google searches looking for private lesson teachers. There are a couple other sites as well that help connect teachers to students, and I'll leave a couple of those links in the video. Another option for income are standard gigs. This means weddings, parties, any kind of event that's going to want to pay a live musician to play. These gigs have their benefits because they usually pay pretty well, they are low maintenance in terms of the pressure is a lot less than a serious concert, um, and it's usually just a show up and go kind of thing. It's great to put a little group together with a couple of your friends to be able to take these kinds of gigs on the fly, and if you're more used to playing with the same people, it makes these gigs even more low maintenance for you. Another option is studio recording. Especially if you play a classical instrument, there are a lot of pop artists who want to have, say, a featured violin part or something like that on one of their songs, and you'll get paid for studio time to do work like this. Pretty much all these avenues take a certain amount of networking within the scene and also putting yourself out there that you're interested in this kind of work. But they're all viable sources of income, and you'll likely have to do more than one of them to make your living. 
After brainstorming some of your potential ideas for income, you'll want to ask yourself if you prefer to work for yourself or you prefer to work for others. There are definitely benefits to each. If you work for yourself, you get to make your own schedule, you have creative control, and I personally prefer to work for myself as often as I can. However, working for yourself puts a much stronger workload on you. You're typically doing the scheduling, you're emailing all the contacts and figuring out the details. When you're working for someone else, you pretty much follow your instructions and get to do less work, essentially. However, you don't get to make important decisions and you're typically carrying out somebody else's vision. If you're just starting out, it's not a bad idea to consider working for others just to help you gain experience and gain new connections. But it's never too soon to start your own projects. If you have the time to invest and you feel like you can organize yourself to really see a project through to completion, it's worth it to start thinking about what you might like to do on your own time. It's really important as a freelancer to manage your time. You're going to be juggling a lot of projects at once, and nobody is going to be there as your boss looking over your shoulder, making sure you're doing things and showing up. It's way too easy to let things slip through the cracks when you're doing a lot of things, so I'm religious about keeping a calendar. I have my calendar synced to my phone, synced to my Gmail so I can check it anywhere, and I'm constantly updating it and tweaking it. For me, I have over 15 private students, so that's 15 different schedules that I'm juggling, in addition to rehearsing with my string quartet, rehearsing with a Baroque orchestra, doing my YouTube videos every week, and any other gigs that I might happen to have that month. With all that stuff, I would never be able to keep it straight without a calendar. I also make daily to-do lists just to make sure that if I have to juggle three to four different projects on one day, I'm sure to carve out enough time for each. It's also really easy to get overwhelmed and pretty exhausted as a freelancer because you're taking on so many projects and you're trying to accomplish a lot and balance, again, your artistic goals with your financial goals. It's really easy to get a little bit too weighed down by all of your responsibilities and all the things you're trying to achieve, so I think it's also really important to carve out your me time, make sure that you've got either time to exercise, time to play with your pet, time to spend time with your significant other, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you're balancing your whole life because it's very easy to get drained as a freelancer. The freelance schedule usually means working six to seven days a week just because your projects are going to bleed over into all different days. I think it's completely fine to have to work that much. You just have to be smart about when you get your time to recharge and relax. Because our income is somewhat unpredictable and fluctuates from month to month, it's absolutely essential that we are managing our money. It's not fun. I'm not a math person at all, so balancing checkbooks and things like that are no fun at all. But it's a complete essential to living a successful life as a freelancer. We don't have a paycheck coming every two weeks the way most people do. We don't have a salary and benefits. We've got to sort of figure that out on our own. And that's okay. We get a lot of flexibility and we get a lot of freedom in our careers as a result. But it's way too stressful if we don't keep everything under control. For me, I look at my bank statement at least a couple of times a week, and I'm also budgeting each month, having a ballpark idea of how much I expect to make that month and how I'm going to divide it up over my various expenses. For me, the summer is a pretty slow time because most of my private students are taking off for vacation or taking a break from lessons, so I know my income is going to be a lot less over those months. Because I can predict that, I usually start in the late winter and early spring saving up a little reserve so that I'll be able to live comfortably over those months even though I'm bringing in less money. And with the loss of work, I have a ton more free time over the summer, so that's usually a really good time for me to take on a new project. Typically I'll do something that maybe doesn't bring in as much income, but I don't usually have the time for. So I'll do something like a solo album, some kind of recording, or maybe a concert project. It's really important to keep in mind your artistic goals. As soon as we get too focused on just making our living and getting money, it's really easy to start to feel kind of unhappy and dissatisfied with our work. Unfortunately, the things that make us feel the most artistically satisfied are probably not gonna bring in the most money, but we should still be balancing our artistic goals with our financial ones. 
I know for me, I've really enjoyed recording solo albums because they help me grow as a cellist and a musician, and they feel like a very introspective, personal project where I get to express myself exactly as I want to. For some people, it might be putting their own group together and doing a series of concerts with that group, and the concerts may be self-produced, so that means that you won't be making a ton of money off of each, but you'll be able to curate the concert exactly as you want, choose your own venue, and go from there. Maybe your artistic goals are just to make sure you're getting a lot of a certain kind of gig. If you love to play in orchestras, maybe it's playing in a really good orchestra that you feel pays you appropriately. Everybody's artistic goals are different, and we shouldn't compare to another person we see doing something more impressive than us. What's most important is that we feel satisfied as musicians, because that's what's going to motivate us to keep working, and also pull us through the times when we have to do some work that isn't as fun for us. Should you quit your day job? This is a hard one. I personally do not have a non-music job, and that is what I prefer for myself. But everybody's different. I know a lot of freelance musicians who need to bring in a couple hundred dollars extra a month and they choose to do some kind of, you know, retail, food service, sort of non-music regular job to fill in that gap. A lot of people enjoy this because it feels sort of like a break from their musical life and it allows them to do something a little bit different. For me, the times that I did non-music jobs, I found myself really bitter and kind of angry that I had all this education and all this knowledge that wasn't being used at my non-music job. So for me, I just had to pull the plug and say I'm going to find other ways to make money through music because that's what makes me feel satisfied. It's really a personal choice, but if you find that your non-music job is draining you and taking time away from your musical endeavors, it's worth reassessing how can you bring in some income through a musical source that will make you feel more satisfied. I hope some of these thoughts and ideas got you thinking and got you feeling a little bit less afraid of starting a freelance career. If you're a freelancer as well, I would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions to people looking to start a freelance music career, so be sure to leave them in the comments. If you have any questions or there's any topic you'd like to hear more about, be sure to leave a comment about that too. I'd like to start doing more vlogs like this on topics that are relevant to my audience, so be sure to leave your suggestions and let me know if there's something you want to know more about. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like these videos, and you can also become a supporter on Patreon which is, by the way, one of the ways that I make a living as a freelancer.